Yes. We are just in the middle of this meditation of the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ, of the Annunciation. And I would like just to continue now to, to, to invite you, to explain you this, and to invite you to enter more and more into the depths of this absolutely unique event, which is so important, I repeat, that the Church makes us meditate about this three times a day, the whole year. That is uh, always already a proof that here is something going on which concerns me absolutely essentially, which is really essential to my life and not only to my life generally, but to my daily life and even to each moment of my daily life. Therefore, three times a day, morning, afternoon, evening. And see, now when the angel approaches Our Lady in this incredible humility, this humility is exactly that, what God wants to show us in this mystery. There is all, all about humility in this event. The angel, so immense, so majestic, power of God, he kneels down on, before Our Lady. He makes himself humble. He greets her in this brave, famous angel's prayer. An angel's prayer, which is like the echo of all angels. All angels greet now Our Lady with these words. And now you see with your eyes these two wonderful personalities. She who, has, who is just about to become the mother of God. But I say, I say you, she is free. Our Lady has to accept freely this. And now the heaven is looking to that. God has made the decision. But this decision, that is speak always in this humble, imperfect and never perfect human way of speaking, this decision, this decision depends on the free agreement of Our Lady. This is very important because then you understand who she is for me. Because of God, who is God for me, I understand. He is my creator, he is my savior. I owe everything to him. But besides him, I do not owe, owe, owe anything to anybody else. As, for instance, the Protestants would say. And that's not true. Because when God decides, if God decides such a way of coming to us, it concerns me. Now look, the angel engaged this conversation. In fact, it's a greeting. We have already started to meditate about this greeting yesterday in that vision. When God greets Mary, when the whole heaven greets Mary, when everybody turns towards Mary and say, Ave Maria. And there she hears her, hears her name, this time not pronounced by St. Joseph, or by, or by her mother, St. Anna, or St. Joachim, or by anybody else of her acquaintances, but by the angel. When the angel calls her Maria, it is different. It is then that the whole angelic world, understanding more than anybody else, the extent of this Maria. And we tried to have this vision that it is the fullness of all fullness what God ever gave, like an immense ocean. The blue stars, the blue sky, we can just see without end. All this, what God gave to the world, is now in this little being, in this immense heart of this little being, in this infinite heart, in this, let me say, infinite soul of this little being. All what God ever gave to the world. Maria is contained in, this, in, contained in this ocean God created for himself. Yes, and now, and now one word after the other. Grazia plena. Fullness of grace. This is overwhelming. Our Lady is just astonished to hear such words. Never such words have been said to any bird in this world, to any creature. And that she hears. And it's the angel who is doing only well, uh, the echo. God speaks to him. God greets her with his words. That the Lord is with thee. Dominus tecum. It is the relationship between Mary and the most holy trinity which is depicted here. And then especially blessed art thou amongst women. And then the blessed art thou amongst women. You know the angel did not continue. That the second part the, the continuation of this Hail Mary will be said by Saint Elizabeth. But the angel stops here. 
Now she who is blessed amongst all creatures, above all them. And what was the answer of Our Lady? Did you know what she answered? Nothing. She didn't say anything. Our Lady had not spoken yet. She was reflecting what this would mean. She was thinking about, meditating about. That is not that she doubted. That is not that she made obstacles, that she made an objection. It's just different from that what happened some time before when the same angel announced the, the coming of St. John the Baptist to his father, Zachary. When he heard the words of the angel, he doubted. How is it possible? What is that? Yet, and therefore we will be punished. In Our Lady is no doubt. It's just a question she, she doesn't understand. She does, she, does not, she does not grasp the extent of these words. They are so overwhelming. What does that mean, the Lord with thee? What does that mean, fullness of grace? It must be something absolutely incredible. So, she waits. She waits. And then the angel continues. He continues the wonderful explanation for what he came. You know, that God has chosen her. That she has to become the mother, the mother of the Son of God, who wants to be made man in her womb. And this, this will provoke then, this announcement that she will become mother, the mother of the Messiah, the mother of the Son of God, the Vana, and that he will give him the name of Jesus, the Savior. That is no doubt that then she is chosen as the mother of the Savior. She is and she understands very well that this, she has been chosen to be the new Esther, the new Judith, that, that woman from the paradise where the woman will crush Satan's head. She understands that immediately. But what is her answer? Of course, to be, to be honored with such an honor, with such an honor no, no creature will ever receive. Even the angels is exceeding everything which exists in the world, which makes you close to God as nothing else, nobody else, even the highest angels and all the angels together. And Our Lady will be honored, of course. She will feel, I am now the queen. He makes me the queen, the mother of God. She is concerned with something else. Do you see? How is this possible? How this will be done, as I do not know man. That's the answer. The first answer of Our Lady is the answer of wisdom, an answer of logic, an answer of trust and faithfulness. Our, Our Lady is faithful to God, and she knows that God cannot, cannot, um, uh, cannot contradict himself. And she knows that God has chosen her for eternal virginity. And she has received that order. And she has given herself entirely to God. How is this possible? It's not normal in the world that a virgin has come, can become mother. Or a mother remains virgin. It's not possible. In the laws of the world. So, our lady, when she hears the angels, it's clear she will become mother. It's not a doubt. But now, what is important is that she must get an answer, an explanation. If by normal way, you're, according to nature, this is not possible, how will it be possible? She doesn't doubt that it is to be possible because, because she knows that God can do all things and she trusts him infinitely. This is important now and therefore the angel answers. The angel answers very precisely. And here this, we have the first disclosure in the history of the world of this God who is a father and who gives to the world his son. And this will be accomplished by the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost comes over you and overshadows you and the power of God. And that what you will be born of you will be called the Son of God. Feel you stay in it. Vocato. That is so important, you see? And now you have understood how the angel leads, leads Mary. She understands now that that is really, not only that she becomes the mother of the Savior, but she becomes the real mother of God. And that she understands very well, as she will in some moments sing in her canticle, Magnificat, that from now on 
all generations will praise me will praise me and will exalt me as the highest of all creatures she knows that she knows that that this is the the the, the, the privilege no no other person can receive and now and now what is the great work now what's happening now she has not yet given the angel has explained and now everything depends on her look we must understand that our lady could say no and she could say no not as a sin understand that our lady could as a little girl from Nazareth as a, a little girl of the poor Saint Anne and Saint Joachim as uh, the, 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 the humble handmaid of the Lord she could say she could say no no I can't do that this is too much for me I am too too mean a person I am a nothing I, it's impossible for me please choose somebody somebody else she could have in an act of humility a wrong humility humility she would say I am not worthy to this how many times we say when God calls us oh my Lord I am not worthy how many times I heard when the people will ask by Our Lady um, to become Knights of the Immaculata would you please so kind so kind and 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 help me to save souls oh father I am not worthy how many a times I have heard when I preach retreats you know and the people would have received the vocation and they would have understood that 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 uh, that, that God calls her and the reason to us who say no is I'm not worthy I'm not worthy of such a vocation man is anybody worthy about that no, nobody so our lady could theoretically say no say no in this this idea I, 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 I it's too much for me no no my god this is this is so much exalting such a poor nothing that that that, that please please uh, uh, I, I humble myself and I give my place happily to a better one and that would be a no and we all would go to hell that's it that's it what is at stake the salvation of the world of everybody of the world of everybody of us of you and me depends now on this answer of our lady so we can look how heaven is excited how heaven the angels in heaven the souls in perigree in all beings are looking to this place to this to this scenery to this moment where the destiny of the world will be decided by whom by Mary and that is so important that we have that in mind when now without any hesitation as she would be just it would be absolutely clear there's no other answer ecce ancilla domini fia pici secundum verbum tuum behold the handmaid of the Lord be done according to thy word the answer of our lady look it is the, the, the Latin or the Greek is so great ecce ancilla domini behold slave of the of the Lord slave of the Lord the slave of the master ancilla is handmaid but it is really the state of a slave ancilla means that somebody is absolutely in the of under the authority of this who who of whom she is this lady or this person is an ancilla so it would be good say to slave slave no only will nothing i give myself entirely this is ancilla and then then ancilla of the lord of our lord ecce behold ecce means i'm ready ecce means here i am but she doesn't call herself I am here the handmaid of the Lord look to me Jesus look to me angel I give you the extent she doesn't think about the I she doesn't even mention it it is see handmaid this thing here handmaid this thing here this being here there's nothing here slave of the Lord have you heard what she has been appointed now just a moment before Queen of heaven and earth, mother of God, highest authority, infinite power, and the answer, slave, slave, nothing. Slave is just a slave. That's so overwhelming. And the action is just this 
fully disposition. She opens herself entirely. Do what we what you want means action. Behold, do what we want. I am ready for everything, and that's what really is at stake. Because our lady knew the Holy Bible perfectly. She knew each word of the Holy Bible by heart. And she has read, read many, many times, maybe even the eve, uh, the eve, some minutes before the angel's visit, the famous prophecy of Jeremy, of Isaiah, of Daniel. All they speak about him, of the Savior who will be a man of suffering, like a leper, thrown out of the people and become the worst of all. People would not understand this mystery of salvation, but our lady understands to become his mother become means to become a mother of incredible sufferings. That she knows. And therefore, she says, Ecce. She says not, I will accept to be now the mother of Jesus, okay, but afterwards let me in peace. Never. Ecce. Absolutely forever in all things. Fiat, Miki. Be it be done. Fiat, this is a word, right? it, it, it may happen. It may happen. It will happen, according to thy word. All will happen. Whatever you will say, I say yes. This is the word of Our Lady. And this yes of Our Lady, we can meditate many times a day. It is, my dear faith, it is so far overwhelming. So many messages, so many miracles, that it is hard, hard to get this into a meditation of one week. If you only that would meditate. But you have many other things to say. So I have to pass quickly to another theme. But just for a while, let's, let's stay with her a little bit. What this mean? What has happened? What is happening now? She from herself puts herself on her place. On saying that she is just ready. That all what is good in her, all what is great in her, all what is be, will be done. The in, incredible work of the salvation of all men. And whatever will come out of that, she is just ready. And she accepts and she will never retract from this, this decision. This is Our Lady's decision. But look now, what happens with this decision? This word of Mary, this wonderful word of Mary, she always, I've said to you yesterday in the beginning, she almost says nothing. But when she says this, a new world begins, a world begins, a new uh, order begins, a supernatural order. Because this brings the heaven into, let me, I wouldn't say into trouble, but brings the heaven into, into a new movement, if we could dare to say that. And in this moment, the great mystery comes. The great God, the infinite God, the Son of the Father, comes from heaven to earth. The great miracle happens. In the worst, last moment, say it by Our Lady, be it done according to thy word, thy word. Verbum Dei. The Son is the word of the Father. And this word of the angel is just the echo. And when she said word, in this moment, in this very moment, in this little second, which just now is there, changes everything. Suddenly in the darkness of the world, which is dominated by the devil totally, besides this, this little spot where she is, and it is her, her soul in her heart, in this moment, the light comes. The overwhelming light will, sh will shine, will enlighten all men coming into this world. Everybody will receive from this light. In this moment, God himself, the creator, comes into his creature. The Lord becomes a slave. He depends on, he makes him dependent himself on the little handmaid. He will completely be under her control. So much as a little child is under the control of their mother during the first nine months in her womb. He will live her life and she will live his life. It's just impossible to understand. So many miracles. But now for us, let, let, us, let, us, let us see some circumstances which are absolutely important. Because that what Jesus Christ, what God initiates here, is so much, so much that we have hardly words. First of all, now God is made man. Now Jesus, Jesus starts to exist. Before it was only the word of God, the second person of the host holy trinity. Now it is Jesus. Because he has the name. She calls him the name. You call him the name Jesus. Jesus is savior. 
Now he starts his mission, which is the same thing that his own idea, his identity, his identity name is Yehushua, the Savior. I am here to save the world. I am to save all people. And now in this moment, in this moment, the Holy Ghost, oh my Lord, please help me to say not stupidities now. It's so hard and so difficult and it's so great. Now look, the Holy Ghost is accomplishing this work by the Holy Ghost from the, from the, from the Virgin Mary, we say in the Creed. And that is the Holy Ghost doing. He is now taking from the body of Our Lady, from the soul of Our Lady, from the, from the uh, blood of Our Lady, from the heart of Our Lady, the body, the material of the human nature of Jesus Christ. In this moment, when Our Lady says, uh, yes, I behold, I behold the handmaid of the Lord, happens a creation. God creates a soul from nothing. God creates a soul from nothing. And who is this soul? What is this soul? It's the soul of Jesus Christ. The human soul of Jesus Christ is created by God, by the most holy trinity in this moment from nothing. And the soul of Jesus Christ, anima Christi, we say, soul of Christ, um, uh, save me, you know, uh, sanctify me. This is this soul which starts to exist thanks to her fiat. And now the soul starting to exist and immediately in the same moment the soul unites herself with the body. And the soul with the body, with the blood, is a body from her body. The blood from her blood. It's, it's just incredible. The angel takes, takes the, the, the Holy Ghost takes from herself as it takes the body from the mother becomes uh, the body of the child is taken from the body of the mother. Very simple. But now there in the body of the mother is also the seed of the father and here is the miracle of the virgin birth here is the eternal father who by the holy ghost is accomplishing this absolute unique miracle of the virgin birth this soul and this man this human this human being being also god this jesus christ will be the son of only one person of only one of only one person, of one mother, without any father. The father is, the father is replaced by the work of the Holy Ghost itself. And now, my friends, look at that. Now the body of Jesus Christ starts to exist. First as a little embryo, like any birth of any, any person in this world. But this embryo, which will grow in the Mary's womb to become a, a, human, a human body of the little child of Jesus, we will see nine months after in the day of Christmas, on the day in Beth of Bethlehem, this, this, this little body, you know, this union of, of, of this body, of this human nature in this moment, all that happens in the one moment with God's nature is just this union. And this we meditate. What's happening now? My dear friends, it's impossible that the human nature is now penetrated. God's nature, the Son of God, penetrates this human nature, which is, remember, it's nothing, nothing, nothing. But he lifts it up, joins this to his Godhead, to his godly nature. And this becomes, like we say, an unction. Therefore, it's Christus, the ointed, the unction. The divine person points the human nature and the human nature penetrates the human nature and joins the human nature that so much that the person who keeps this human nature living, existing, is the person of God. So God speaks with human words. God feels with human feelings. God, God, the Son of God, Beats his heart beats with a human heart. That's the sacred heart of Jesus. And now in the month of July, this God will have blood which will be shared many, many times. And it's the blood of the Son of God. Look, the litanies of our Lord of the sacred heart uh, and of the of the of the of the, um, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. When you have in the beginning this great mystery, and this great mystery, you know what happened now in this moment, in this moment when this. What I just explained with my poor, poor little words that was happened. 
In this moment starts to exist Jesus Christ, God and man. In this moment happens something incredible. It is the priestly ordination of God's man. It is the beginning of the eternal priesthood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sovereign high priest. God becomes man. That man become God. God comes from heaven to earth. That the world can come back to God. In one place. In one bridge. Which will be built. In one way. Which will be, which will be opened. And this way. This bridge. Is Jesus Christ. God and man. Yes. In the womb of Jesus Christ. The womb, the womb of Our Lady. The womb of Our Lady is now the cathedral in which happens the priestly ordination of Our Lord Jesus Christ, my dear. In this moment, everything happens. God unites Himself with men, with human nature. Now the human, the human, the, the world has, a, God has a place in this world. And first only in Our Lady's womb. Afterwards, everywhere in each heart who will be received. All those who uh, uh, believe in him will receive the grace that God will come into hand and the world will be made flesh and will dwell amongst us and not only in our lady's womb. Incredible miracles. Yes, Jesus Christ, sovereign high priest, stands before us yet in the womb of our lady and starts his office to bring the world back to God. To give the to give to go to give the most holy trinity all honor and glory as we could never never do any again again through our miserable life what is the relationship between man and god what is what we have to have in mind when we think about what we have to do before god what all creatures have to do before god who has given you everything who is the beginning and the end of of, of us god he is our principles and our last end and what is recognizing that we owe everything to God and we are completely dependent on God? Adoration. Adoration. Absolute worship. This is what we have to do everywhere, every day, every moment in our life. And we do it not never. Remember, we make an act, we, we make uh, our, our exam of conscience all the time hearing these things. Huh? So, and who comes now and gives God the most humility finally again all due honor? Adoring him as the principal and friend of from whom everything depends and everything be belong to whom everything belongs Jesus Christ from this moment on Jesus Christ, but nowhere else than in the womb of Mary Jesus Christ who has just received his heart from Mary's heart his blood from Mary's blood we together with Mary's heart bleeding full full of love making this person this great sacrifice of worship and adoration from this moment on it will never stop and that's written afterwards when we hear the first time when our lady will open her mouth magnificat this is the worship this is adoration she says with Jesus Christ this is the top of that so in this moment Jesus Christ begins to repair our negligence that what we never do all the people forget to do and neglect to do we start our prayers. We start believing in God. And what we do all the time is, Oh my Lord, please, 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 I need, I need, give, 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 give. That's it. No, that's it. Our whole world is just, our religious world is just upside down. And this is that what we have to see. What is the next one? What is that what we have to do to give to God all the time? If you receive from God everything all the moment, everything you are and you, 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 bespoke, you will see it. Not only treasures above treasures, the treasure you have in your heart is infinitely more than the whole world together. So even if imagine that God gives you, gives to a, a benefactor, gives some more, somebody a whole world, a whole world with all its treasures. To a lady, if at the end of the retreat you give to Father McDonald's one hundred thousand dollars and to me one million, I will never forget you in my life. I will thank you every day and send you Thanksgiving letters as much as you want. And that what you receive, we receive from God all the time, without any moment of 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 of, of lack. Always is infinitely more. And where is our Thanksgiving towards such a thing? What a misery. We do not thank God. We do not thank God 
mostly we forgot that at all. And that is the second thing. Jesus Christ in this moment with Our Lady reestablished everything what human being, what the creature should do from the beginning. Yes, in the paradise it was like that. But from then on, from the, from the fall of, of our first parents, nothing anymore like that. And then Jesus Christ starts to repair. From this moment on, the sovereign high priest, together with the mother of the high priest, the sovereign high priest and the mediator from heaven and earth, together with the mediatrix, the redeemer with the co-redemptrix, starts his office. From this moment on, heart beat, Jesus' heart, Jesus' heart starts to beat. It is the moment when the heart of Jesus is created, the sacred heart of Jesus, so much beloved, and starts to beat, to beat for us, and to beat for the Father, and do the work we had to do, and never do. Adoration, thanksgiving, atonement, asking pardon for our sins, already now, and imploring for us all the graces we need. That's what Jesus and Mary are doing from this moment on. You know, that's just so incredible. I give you another very important uh, reflection about this. Now look, what happened now. It's the beginning of the salvation of the world. That now, from now on, and in, uh, before, because of this moment, even the previous generation can be saved in order, in, 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 in showing this which comes. All the saints and the saved of the Old Testament would have been would be saved in before because of this moment of yes for our lady and all afterwards the same. So now when this moment is the beginning of the salvation of billion and billion and billion of poor sinners, in this moment when the heaven sees that God Himself makes himself so small, so humble. It's just, oh, the angels look at that. How is that possible that our great God can become such a small thing? How is it possible that such a small creature become so immense that she is the mother of God? Oh, praise be you for all your miracles. That's what's happening. And what's happening? What is now happening, really? We are in Nazareth. The angel came. This great thing, you know, this absolute outstanding miracle that the angels in the heaven is just shaken. We can just imagine St. Michael Archangel, Gabriel, which is not there, Raphael, and the billions, and the Caribbean, and the Seraphim, they are surrounded this mystery and cannot, cannot even speak anymore. They forget to sing their praises because that's, that's above all. And here on earth, what happens? Now that the heaven opens, the dove is coming, and the light is coming through the heavens into the house of Nazareth. And our lady is full of lights, and everybody is looking what's happened in this house, and everything is so, so, so clear and great, and all the birds are singing in the world, and all the flowers are coming together. You know, nothing about that. Our Lady must have, must have revealed. Now Jesus Christ came from heaven and over and boom, and she feels it here, no? Nothing! You understand what I mean? Afterwards, Elizabeth says to her, Blessed be you because you have believed. Another great very miracle. We've just, we've just realized this incredible event. We've just realized how God becomes so little out of love for us. Such a humility, such a humility of the angel who makes himself small, the power of God. And Our Lady, the humility of all humilities, who says, calls herself the little slave, being already the queen of heaven and earth. What a lesson for us. And then the next immediately, hope, ha ha happy you, because you have believed. Because what Our Lady realizes, what are the great feelings of Our Lady? Will her heart now beat? Nothing. Will she see something? Nothing. Will she feel something? Nothing. Will she taste something? Nothing. Will she, will she, will she touch something? Nothing. Just the ear, the word of the angel. The angel has explained that in very simple day, words, as we can read it in the Bible, and we hear it so often in the Gospels in honor of Our Lady. Our Lady answered, 
Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done according to my, my word, to thy word. And the angel bows and disappears. And afterwards is everything as before. For the word is everything as before. For Mary is everything as before. For St. Joseph everything seems before. Nothing changed. Our Lady doesn't feel now like suddenly sitting here inside our Lord. She doesn't have any, any, any experience we want with a charismatic saying, I feel Jesus. Now feel Jesus. Um, she has a special love of Jesus. This is not another love she had as she had all the time before. It's just that she heard a knowledge. She heard a message. And she has to believe blindly that now this happens. She has no proof. She cannot point here Jesus Christ is sitting now. That all what I say is overwhelming realities. She has no proof. She cannot read. She cannot feel it. She cannot touch it. She must just blindly believe it. And that is the beginning of the greatest moment in the history of the world. So now ask yourself. You know what Jesus Christ has done here. And what we now realize is not just, and this is absolutely outstanding for you and me, all that what has happened in that moment, in the 25th of March, at the moment when the world was divided in two pieces before and after Jesus Christ, that is not just a beautiful event which happened once, once in the past and never again. It happens once, but it happens all the time. This once Jesus Christ wants to share. Our Lady wants to share. And that is, that's just terrible. Look, let's go on with the angel of the Lord. What is the third one? We have meditated this beautiful, behold the handmaid of the Lord, the slave, humility. And then we hear St. John, and we repeat it in the third invocation. Et verbum caro factum est. And the answer is, et habitavit in nobis. What? The Word was made flesh. Where in the world the Word was made flesh? Only in one heart, in one soul, in one body. In the body of Our Lady, nowhere else. And dwelt amongst us. How is that possible now? How can it dwell? So the world was made flesh, et habitabit, and dwelt, and lived, and took his, his, his happy tackle in nobis, not only amongst us, but in us, in us. So as Our Lady can say in this moment of incarnation, when the angel left her, he is in me. He is in me with his body and soul, with his blood and his humanity and humanity, with his sacred heart. He is here. That she believes. You know what I mean? Holy Communion. Holy Communion. My dear faithful, we have that every day when we go communion receiving. We have that every day at Holy Mass. The Word must be flesh. Jesus comes from heaven to the altar again and again. And He comes straight in my soul. As if I would be Our Lady. And in fact, you know what? It, it's like this. It must be like this. Let's be logic. The world was made flesh and came into this world only in one womb. So if this should be happening with me, I must be also in that womb. I must also be there. So it's one chance that you can receive Jesus Christ and the world was made flesh and that dwells in you, if in you is Our Lady, because He come to dwell in her. And because you, she is in you, he dwells also in you. That is logic. But that means that we have to have Our Lady in us. That means that we have the true devotion. That means Our Lady is absolutely important for our salvation. If not, if she is not here, Jesus Christ will not come and meet flesh and dwell among us. That's very logic. We will speak about this detail much, much. Now, for this moment, I would just like to invite you to have this in mind. Look, it's so hard to believe. You go to communion, what do you feel? Nothing. Just a piece of bread. 
you you get the piece of bread and you say some prayers and it's just nothing you have no feeling no proof just everything like before here you had your breakfast and here you have a little host a little thing what's the difference you don't feel any difference you are not full of boing 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 love you have not any 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 inspiration of the holy ghost you have not just a light who comes from heaven woo and all something like that nothing just nothing blessed you are are thou because you believed the same reaction now you understand one thing god what he makes with our lady he wants to continue to make in the heart of all her children and the condition as he wants that we do the, what we will we are to uh, supposed to bring to him in order that he can accomplish his miracles and graces is the same as for our lady and if you want to fulfill these conditions belief humility regret openness to god you have just to join our lady and to become her child and this is the true devotion so exam of conscience for your confession tomorrow what's about my communions my fervent communions my lazy communions my communions full of unbelief full of hesitation full of distraction full of full of of all kind of stuff but not of faith lack of this conviction not being at all often aware that Jesus comes into me God comes into me as he came exactly as he came when he came for the first time from heaven to uh, from heaven to this to the earth into the womb of our lady what change in the world in this moment when Jesus came Jesus Christ came and he, and was incarnate what a change in my heart it would be if I would realize the same Jesus Christ coming into my heart because Jesus Christ came from heaven to earth in order to change Mary's heart to become the mother of God. To change Mary's heart to become the, the womb, the, 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 the sanctuary most holy. And when he comes into your heart, it's the same thing. He wants to make you the sanctuary most holy. The dwelling of God. The dwelling of the most holy trinity. The dwelling of God who wants to change you and get out all the remnants of sin to save you. And to give you all graces and lights, fullness of faith, hope, and especially love. All this Jesus Christ wants to give you as he gave it to Our Lady. And that is the mystery of the Incarnation. So you see, if you start to realize and to think about such little, little great events, we are just lacking, we are short of words. So please, again, meditate about this. You will have soon lunch. After the lunch, he please have rest. Have a, uh, you can take a, 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 a sun bath. Uh, is, it is almost 100. So you can have a, a beautiful if you want. But I, 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 I suggest you not to put yourself too much in the sun. If not, you will come back here with a problem. So please have a rest after the, the thing. But have also a time to reflect about that. Whenever you go to the, to the church, to the chapel, and especially when you prepare for tomorrow's com Holy Communion, think about this, what we just said. How my Holy Communion, Jesus Christ now wants by a miracle, renew in me, with me, the mystery of his incarnation. And Our Lady wants to renew in me, with me, the mystery of the, the, the great moment of the Annunciation. And the angels are around. And especially your guardian angels with the overwhelming joy and expectation will my little protective child e eventually be a little bit more awakened and not just a sleeping Christian but a loving Christian this is what we have to ask okay now we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost Amen glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost yes, In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.